Hey guys, what's up? Welcome or welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name's Zoe and I'm so happy that you clicked on today's video. So welcome back to another one of my TBR and wrap up videos. I feel like I see this every time, but these months are just flying by. Like the fact that October is already over is so crazy, but I'm also just like thriving right now. Like this is my time of the year. I am in my element. Like October was amazing. I'm so excited for November. So um, last month was so good. I read nine books, which is my best reading month, I think since June or July. So I'm really happy with how it went. And not only did I read a lot more books than I've been reading, but I loved almost every single one of them, which is awesome because it's no fun to read a bunch of books that you don't like. So I'm really excited to start this video with my wrap up and tell you everything that I read in October. The first book that I read was one that I am going to have a bit of a controversial opinion on. Please don't come for me. I know this is a lot of people's like favorite, but I read Akamoff and I didn't like it. I didn't like this book. I really wanted to because I really enjoyed Akatar. I thought it was a lot of fun. But this one I just had problems with. I actually started this one in September and it took me over a month to read and it was just not my thing. I was actually pretty surprised because a lot of people that I talked to said the first half or the first third was not good. It was really boring, a lot of world building, but then after that it got really good once you got to the action. Funnily enough, I felt the exact opposite way. I really loved like the first 200 pages. I thought they were so good. And then it all went downhill from there. I just was not entertained. I was not interested at all. I didn't want to pick the book up. It was hard to get through, unfortunately. Um, and because of that, I honestly don't know if I'll continue the series because I, I don't want to go through that again. You know what I mean? But I just did not like this book, unfortunately. And I gave it 2.75 stars. So I'm really sorry if you liked this book, but I didn't. I did redeem myself with the next book that I read though. I read one of my new favorite books ever. I read The Seven Year Slip by Ashley Poston and oh my goodness did I absolutely adore this story. I read this because I've had it since it came out and then I hadn't read it and everybody started to and everybody seemed to love it and I felt like immense FOMO so I picked it up and I'm so happy that I did like I cannot express the amount of love that I have for this book it's basically a story about this girl named Clementine she's living in her late aunt's apartment and she was told that this apartment is magic but she never really believed her aunt until she suddenly finds herself living seven years in the past and while she's in the past she meets this guy who is living in the apartment and from there it just turns into this really complex but beautiful love story and I think what I loved about this one so much was it was just such a unique story like I've never read something quite like it and just the writing was so good it was so happy and cute and fluffy and I was just obsessed. I think about it every day. I tabbed the crap out of it. Like it was just amazing. So this one gets five stars for the sake of the five star rating scale, but it is one of my favorites and I would give it a hundred stars if I could. Then I moved on to an audiobook actually. I read Bossy Pants or listened to Bossy Pants by Tina Fey. This is Tina Fey obviously, her memoir um, about her life, her time on Saturday Night Live, all that good stuff. And I don't rate memoirs, but I did have a really fun time with this one. I always try to listen to the audiobooks when it's like celebrities and stuff because usually they're the ones narrating it and I just find that really fun. And I just love hearing like all the behind the scenes about Saturday Night Live and like all the stuff that goes on and their past episodes and everything because I'm such an SNL fan. I just had a lot of fun with that one and I would recommend it if you like Tina Fey. Then I moved on to the part of the month where I was reading spooky season reads because I had to make sure that I at least got a couple in there before October ended and we started it off with The Final Girl Support Group by Grady Hendrix. This is one that had been on my TBR for a couple years now and I was so excited to finally pick it up. It's basically about the women that slashers are based off of like the real final girls from slashers it's 
it's the people that the movies are based on, if that makes sense. I feel like it's really confusing to explain, but it makes sense when you read it. Um, and I just really loved it in true Grady Hendrix fashion. It was a horror book, but it was still like lighthearted and funny and entertaining. And I just had so much fun. I would say it's not my favorite Grady Hendrix book I read, but it is definitely up there. So I gave this one 4.25 stars because it was just so much fun and i would say if you're interested in reading it but you're not like a big horror fan this one is definitely more like suspense and thriller so i definitely think you could still enjoy it um and i personally loved it and i will definitely reread it in future spooky seasons then i moved on to a buddy read i read my roommate is a vampire by jenna levine I was really like trying to stay away from this book because just based on the cover and what it was about it was giving love in the time of serial killers which is a book that I read last October and I did not like because the title was so misleading like the story was not at all what it made you think it would be and that's what I was figuring this one would be I was really scared that he wasn't actually gonna be a vampire that it wouldn't actually be that good that I wouldn't connect to it I'm here to tell you that he is actually a vampire and this is a really cute romance that is perfect for spooky season or literally any time. Um, it was just so much fun. I loved it so much. The only issue I had is the ending. Like, I have some serious beef with it. I don't know what was going through the author's head, but she really did not <laughs> end this book well, and it really angered me because it was such a good book and it had the potential to be rated so high for me, but because of how it ended, I had to sit at a 3.75 star because... I just it was not an it was not a good ending it wasn't and then continuing on with those spooky season reads I transitioned to reading a short story by one of my favorite Halloween authors I read Rita Hayworth and Shawshank Redemption by Stephen King and I really loved this one it's one of the short stories in this collection and I have wanted to read it for a long time because I really like the movie Shawshank Redemption so I was really intrigued by the story and like seeing how different it was seeing which one was better I can say that the book is better. Um, as good as the movie is, this was even better. Um, I really just loved the way Stephen King told the story. I loved how he portrayed the characters and I honestly just didn't want it to end. It was only like 112 pages, something like that. I gave this one four stars, really enjoyed it. Then I moved on to a book that again I had been reading since early September and it was about time that I finished it. So I read Psyche and Eros by Luna McNamara. This is a Greek mythology retelling about Psyche and Eros and if you're anything like me you don't know anything about that story. So I went into this having a good time because I was completely learning something new and I did enjoy this book however I will say the first like half was so slow um which is why I think it took me so long to read because I was just not wanting to pick it back up but when I finally did pick it up again I really enjoyed it because those last hundred pages were so fun I will say that the Greek gods in this book were like very whiny they just like <laughs> I felt like they were just throwing temper tantrums for nothing but aside from that it was a really fun book and I did enjoy it. I've been on a Greek mythology kick and I was just craving something like that so I gave it a solid three and a half stars just because the first half was not not interesting. Then I moved on to one of my new favorite thrillers. I read The Last Word by Taylor Adams and I was obsessed. It's this super interesting thriller about this girl who's house sitting and she reads a book and gives it a one star review on Amazon and the author of this book is not happy. He is not appreciating that she gave him a one star review and um, this turns into him taking up violence as a way of retaliating and it's basically this really fast-paced thriller set in one location and it's almost a book inside of a book. It's crazy. That's what I'm gonna say. I don't want to tell you too much but I definitely say go read it if you like thrillers at all. I loved it so much I made my mom read it the next day and she also loved it. It was just a great story and it's so hard to find thrillers that are actually really good to me and this one definitely was so I gave this one five stars hands down and then the last book that I read for my spooky October was The Maidens and this one I've wanted to read for a while because I loved The Silent Patient but I've heard really mixed reviews about it so I was kind of hesitant but I actually really ended up enjoying this one it coincidentally had a Greek mythology element to it which was very interesting to me. It was set at a college and basically you were trying to find out who a murderer was so it was quite the opposite of the last word which I appreciated so I wasn't reading two super similar books in a row. 
and I really liked it. And there was also a character in it named Zoe, which I feel like you don't often see characters with the same name as me, so I really enjoyed that, um, and I gave it four stars. So those were the nine books that I read in October. I just really loved all of them. Like it was such a good reading month. I'm going to look back on it and be like, yeah, that was, that was one of my favorite months of reading of the year. So I'm really happy about it. But now onto the fun part, we are going to do my November TBR. Oh, November, that's crazy. But um, I picked 12 books for this TBR. Uh, and for once, I genuinely want to read every book on this TBR. It's not like a, I'm going to be mood reading. I probably won't stick to it at all. No, like I actually want to read them, um, which is really exciting. However, I don't know that I'll get around to 12 books. So we have some options here, but I'm just going to get right into it. So the first book that I want to read in November is The Kiss Curse by Erin Sterling. I'm honestly really upset that I didn't read this in October. I planned to the whole month and I wanted to save it for as close to Halloween as I could, but that backfired because I <laughs> did not end up finishing it. So I'll be reading this in November. No question about it. I love any book that has like a witchy element to it. So I'm really excited for this like fun lighthearted romance. It's gonna be a good time. Then I want to read a book that has been in many of my TBR videos, but this time I actually mean it. I want to read The Cheat Sheet by Sarah Adams. I, it's gonna happen because I know that the rule book is coming out really soon. Um, football just feels like November to me and it is time that I finish Sarah Adams' backlist because how could I say that I'm such a big Sarah Adams fan? but not read the cheat sheet. You know what I mean? Like, I don't feel like a fake, but like, do I? Maybe a little bit. So I'm gonna read it, and I'm so excited because I just know it's gonna be a five-star read. Continuing on with romances, I want to read Archer's Voice by Mia Sheridan. This one I was supposed to read last month, but I just ran out of time, so now is the time. I don't really know what time of the year this one's best for, but for some reason, I'm just feeling like it's gonna be good for November because it's like a small town romance and small town Gilmore Girls fall November, so. There's that one. And then another romance I want to read is As Seen on TV by Meredith Shore. This is another one that's for fan of Gilmore Girls. So obviously again, November, fall, Gilmore Girls, all that stuff. So I wanna read this one. I don't really know much about this one, but it looks adorable and it's set in New York City, which I'm gonna read it if it's set in New York City because I am a New York fan. That's where I wanna live. So I'm excited for it. And then I have a couple more romances, but these are YA ones. Um, the first one being Tilly and Technicolor. This one I have seen a lot of cute reviews about. I recently got it and I'm so excited to read it. I think it's gonna be so good. It's about a girl with ADHD and a boy with autism. So it's like that neurodivergent rep. And I think it's just gonna be the sweetest little story. I'm so excited for it. And I can't wait to read it and come back and let you guys know that you should all read it because I just know it's gonna be one of those that like is very special to my heart. I can just tell. And also the cover is so cute. So I'm really looking forward to this one. And then the last romance is Maybe Meant to Be by K.L. Walther. This is another one that I got fairly recently and it's not technically a new book. She just redid the title and the cover. Um, but I will say the cover is giving fall like 100%. So I feel like it's just going to be again a really good November read. I just want to get all those last fall reads in in November. So I'm really looking forward to this one. I think it's going to be super cute because I am a fan of K.L. Walther. I love her books. So I'm looking forward to it. Then I have a couple fantasy slash thriller books. The first ones are gonna be some YA options. So I have The Brothers Hawthorne, which has been on like two of my TBRs now, but I actually do plan to read it this time because again, like with these other books, it's just giving November and I want to hang out with the Hawthorne brothers because I miss them. I think I've just been avoiding this one because I've heard very mixed reviews about it and it's pretty long to not hear amazing things about but it's time. I want to read it. I will be reading it and I'm excited to hang out with them because I miss Grayson and Jameson, but I miss Grayson. The next one is one that I have been saving for November actually, and I'm going to be doing a buddy read of this one. I have Divine Rivals by Rebecca Ross. This is a very exciting book for me because I had to wait months to get it because publishers were sold out of it, warehouses were out of it, whatever. Um, so I finally got it and now I've just been saving it for the perfect time. This one, as much as I know, is it's a YA historical fiction fantasy romance and they write letters to each other. 
that's all I really know but I do know that people absolutely love it and that the next one is coming out super soon so I want to get to it and I'm very excited and then another buddy read that I'm doing which actually I was supposed to have already started but I'm just a bit behind um, I'm gonna read light lark by Alex Astor this is one that my coworkers and I were just like let's read it like we don't know if it's gonna be good we don't know if it's gonna be bad I know there's a lot of controversy around it but guess I'm gonna read it and I'm excited for it I'm gonna see I've heard it's like it has like those Hunger Games vibes which I'm very intrigued by so we'll see what I think I'm kind of excited but also kind of nervous I'll report back to you guys I don't know and then a, another fantasy, but this one is not YA. We have Assistant to the Villain. This one is on my TBR for the month because I've actually already started it and I need to finish it. This one is about a morally gray villain and this girl who becomes his assistant and they fall in love. It's based on a TikTok series, which kind of makes me nervous because like, what am I supposed to think about that? I don't know, but I'm hopeful that I'll enjoy it. We will see. The next one I have is Spells for Forgetting by Adrian Young. This one, I got it because one of my friends on Instagram said that it had the perfect fall vibes. So here we are, we're gonna read it, and I'm very excited about it because I've actually had this one on my radar for quite some time now, and I'm really excited just to see if it lives up to my expectations because I feel like I'm expecting it to be amazing, and I, I think it will be. And then finally on my TBR, we have Interesting Facts About Space by Emily Austin. This is the author of Everyone in This Room Will Someday Be Dead, which I read last year and really enjoyed. This is actually an ARC. It doesn't come out until I think April? Just kidding, January of next year. It doesn't come out until January, but it sounds really good because the main character sounds just like me. We sound like we're the same person, and because of that, I just felt like I needed to read it immediately like as soon as possible because if I'm gonna feel really connected to a character and feel like seen I'm gonna want to read it so here we are and I'm really hoping to read it in November I actually already read the first chapter and laughed out loud three times so far so I feel like that's a very good sign and I'm excited to continue it so those are the books on my TBR I bet you were expecting me to say Iron Flame because that's coming out this month and everybody's gonna be reading it which no promises maybe I will read Iron Flame but I'm also not expecting to because it is so long and I really want to get to most of these instead another thing that could change this TBR is I really wanted to do a whole read through of the Hunger Games series before the new movie comes out so that's entirely possible in which case this TBR will obviously be thrown out the window not happen or at least some of it won't so really I know I said I was planning on reading all of these, but now that I think about it, maybe everything is still up in the air. I don't know. I guess you guys will have to wait and find out at the end of the month when I do my wrap up. I'm excited to find out. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, but yeah, that was my TBR and wrap up. I hope you guys enjoyed watching it. As you were watching this, um, I just want to say Merry Christmas to all of those who celebrate Starbucks holiday drinks being released because those came out today. And the fact that Starbucks brought back a gingerbread drink like literally has me in tears because I have been asking them to bring back gingerbread for years and they did and I'm so happy about it. But all that aside, thank you so much for watching this video. If you guys want to like, comment, and subscribe, feel free. That helps me so much. Um, I'm just so grateful for all of you and that I'm able to do this YouTube thing. I've been doing it for about a year now and it genuinely just makes me so happy every day. I just feel like this has made such a big impact on my life and I'm just so grateful for every single one of you who watches my videos. So yeah, thank you guys so much and I'll see you guys in the next video.